Good morning, Nerd Fam, and welcome back to SuperCloud 7. We are kicking off day two here, getting you ready for the next gen data platform. My name is Savannah Peterson. Delighted to be joined by Dave Vellante, John Furrier, and Rob Streche. Guys, I'm still yeah. buzzing from last night and all of our great guests yesterday. How are you feeling? Day two of SuperCloud 7 is incredible. In fact, there's so many people we wanted to get to. Day one was phenomenal. We had Ali Godsey, and we had a lot of breaking news. We read. I mean, there's headlines in at least six of the interviews we did. Day two, the day two are interviews with people who couldn't make it on site live, who are going to be coming to you here on pre-records. We'll do whatever it takes to get the interviews. We'll get the pre-records, but if you want to be part of SuperCloud, just ping us anytime. We want the best people, and, and today we've got a great lineup. Dave, Bob Muglia, former CEO of Snowflake, um, founders, founder and CEO of One House from Uber, built the original Data Lake, and just the list goes on and on. We've got Google Cloud, Yasmin, product executive, Run strategy, talks with the DeepMind team. We go into great detail about BigQuery. Mm -hmm. We're going to hear Microsoft's point of view on all this governance. That's going to be curious. fantastic. I'm curious, it's going to be more relevant coming from them. Yeah, right they're, too. and they're making some moves big time. We hear, we, we have a, a, a number of folks from uh, the ecosystem. We've got VCs coming on. I was going to say, so, we even start. we kind of ended yesterday with talking about how our startup's going to come into this or not. Yeah. And we get to get from Glasswing and Rodina over there yeah. really specializes in AI and investing in that space. What's going on at that edge and what's what, what really is being yeah. invested into? Yeah. I, yeah, I, I think it's going to be Really interesting. I just want to give y'all a pat on the back because I had nothing to do with it. We have a really well curated lineup across these days. I think we're getting a, a really complete and comprehensive view of the data landscape right now. I think we're highlighting some of the startups with 17 people like Cubia with the hyperscalers and, yeah. and monoliths, as well as some of the hottest competitors like Databricks and Snowflake. Y'all yeah. are. Well, Savannah, you know, you, you, you've known the history of theCUBE and the folks who are watching, some know, some don't know. The 15 years ago when theCUBE started, big data movement started with Hadoop, and theCUBE mm -hmm. was founded in the office of Cloudera, where, which was the first company that pioneered it. So we have a lot of fellow travelers in our network and our community Very that really so. took a swing for the fences during the Hadoop phase, Dave and Rob, remember those days? And so we're seeing them now as leaders of companies, either startup CEOs or big time executives at companies like Microsoft and others. So you're seeing the moment where everyone who was cutting their teeth into big data 15 years ago, three years ago, it really started to kick into high gear. And now I think you're seeing it playing out where it's like all of us who have been grinding in the, those days have a total tailwind. You got cloud scale, distributed computing architectures on-prem and the gen AI with all that horsepower is just, it's just a lucky strike for anyone who's innovating with data. So I think we're going to see a Cambrian explosion of data innovation. And I think we're just scratching the surface. I mean, I call it a data operating system. You call it um, data innovation with intelligent apps. You talk, we talk about the networking. I think we're going to see a massive shift, certainly the platform shift from the survey data we announced yesterday, clearly points to evidence that the narrative from what we've been saying on theCUBE, what Ali Gatsi has been saying and what, what the big leaders are doing is happening. Well, the, it's just, the, just starting. The big data era sort of put that term in everybody's minds, but they couldn't really relate to it. Gen AI just democratizes that, puts it in everybody's hands. And that's what makes this so excited. It sort of yeah. humanizes the whole data space and, 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 and what we're calling intelligence. And the aha data. moment that, that it caused businesses who were, aren't techie, so boardrooms and executives can see data value Okay, I'm seeing proof, and I, I I have a feeling and proof points that if we don't go Gen AI, we could be out of business, like legit threat to their existence. So that's going to cause, as Ali Gatsi pointed out, a lot of struggles inside the lower ranks of the companies. He called them food fights, which is vernacular in the tech world for control. Who's going to be the czar of AI? And I think you're going to see that come down to and our prediction from KubeCon is that's going to be the platform teams. So again, platform shift creates a persona change. Yep. Rob, you and I were talking about that earlier. So I, it's going to be wild. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. Day one, you had, we juxtaposed Ali Goetze's vision with Benoit Dajaville. And day two, you're going to hear from others how they're thinking about all this governance, all these stovepipes, the shifting control mm -hmm. points. So we'll get a much wider perspective today you know, from more folks in the ecosystem. I, I think Bob Moodle is going to be a good one to watch. Watch One House. This company has roots at Uber. That's a go big or go home play right there. And Rob, they could pull it off. 
And then you got Salesforce, very mature company. That's the one to watch yeah, because what so. they're doing be is essentially building their own data cloud. They're harmonizing that data. They're connecting to the legacy Salesforce app. And there are people who have been dealing with lots of data and lots of consumer data for yes, a long time. Yes, yeah, exactly. And within yeah. and their, don't like their environment <coughs> with free Gen AI. Hundred percent. No, it's a, it's a really good point, David. You're making. And within yeah. their own world, which is you know continues to grow, they're actually building the next data platform. Yeah. And I think what was interesting, it kind of plays off of the fact that we had Informatica that they tried to buy <laughs> yesterday, and today talking to Salesforce about data cloud and how, I, I think again, right place, right time with some of that stuff. And I, I think again, when you start to look at, you know, Google, Microsoft, all one house and a number of the others that are going to be on today, um, it really is really, going to be an interesting, because it plays off of the data that we talked about yesterday from the ETR, where it's like, again, still 30% are going to play outside of Databricks and outside of Snowflake, and really look at the hyperscalers. And that's within joint accounts. Correct. Yeah. Joint yeah. Snowflake Databricks accounts, so the number's much, much higher, exactly. you know, where those guys aren't as prominent. Savannah, you know, one of the things that you talked about a little bit Salesforce is that there's a world of legacy and the world of the ones who had to build it from scratch. I think Salesforce has always been criticized with, through their acquisitions of not having a cohesive platform, but with Gen AI, the tooling can now help them. And I think, you know, when we asked, um, when George Gilbert was up here with doing the interview this morning, uh, yesterday, um, he was talking about this idea of you know, the DBMS separating from the cataloging. Mm -hmm. And he wanted me to ask Ali a question, which was, the Unity Catalog shifted point of control away from DBMS owning the data to the catalog governing the data. You brought this up, Dave, in our, our, our segment yesterday. That's a shift. That means unlocking the data where it's tied to. So, you know, watch George Gilbert's interviews from yesterday if you want to see that. And we had uh, Sanjeev Mohan on. Uh, he's a great data analyst. He was pointing out that there are other companies we should be surveying. And the question is, who is next? Is it through the hyperscalers? Or do we go category? So that, that's going to be an open question for the next the, super the cloud hybrid eight. guys that you brought up, yeah. Yeah. Rob. Right? Yeah, I mean a lot have, of them still out have, there. We had Nutanix on yesterday, which was talking about how, again, when you're looking at doing inference at the edge, we talked about the DGX super pods. Yeah, they got GPT in a box. Debo was telling yes. us about. Yeah, it was. So I think there's a lot of really interesting pieces that are going to happen on-prem, hybrid, at the edge and in the cloud. And I, I think, again, that is actually bared out by the data that we collected with ETR. I, I think you're absolutely right. I think it's really interesting. I hope we get to hear some fun customer stories as well today and, and dig in a little more. We had a lot of really good high level yeah. thought leadership, I felt like today. I mean, TransUnion was an interesting story yesterday, but I think I'm curious to see if we get in a little nitty or grittier. And we've got guests all over the yeah, world. Yeah, should be great. Yeah, we've got some pre-records, we've got a whole bunch of stuff. How many times do you think we'll hear the word data today? I think a lot more than AI, actually. Yeah, I, I was, that's where I was driving with this. Yesterday, yeah. had, yeah. if it was a drinking game on oh. Gen AI, you wouldn't have been as drunk if it was a drinking game for data. Yeah, you'd be hammered. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's what I was thinking, but it, but it is, it, I'm, I'm noting that because as we do these super cloud events and, and have done a few of these now back to back together, uh, you know, this alternating, uh, they're not alternating, they're, they're very much um, overlapping themes between AI and data, but I do think it's interesting. I pay a lot of high level attention to the lexicon and just what are we talking about? And we had that real surge with the last few where everything we talked about was AI. Every conference we've been to has been about AI or making AI real or sharing these use cases. Today, sitting on stage and listening to these interviews, it came up. But it was one of many technologies yeah. that were built into these conversations. So I just, I think it's really interesting because yes, the data area we're in right now in AI requires a lot of data and there's more data now than ever and all this other stuff. But AI is not the only reason these data conversations needed to happen and matter. This needed to happen because I of mean, where it, we're at in innovation. It, anyway. It's, it's, it's so. critical for all companies. And I think, you know, we heard yesterday open table formats, governance layer shift as the two main topics, and I call them boring, you'd probably be sleeping, but you know, five years ago, no one talked about it, but now it's critical. If you do that right, then you have AI enabled intelligent data application, which is the end game. It's like when you go in downtown Boston and there's a lot of construction and they're fixing the pipes mm. and you got to go around everything. That's kind of like the industry right now. It's like, everyone's like, oh shit, why are they digging up the streets? That's what companies are going through. They have to get down and dirty and That's fix good analogy, the plumbing John. and then pave it over, get it right, mm -hmm. and next thing you know, the road's clean. 
and then they'll do it again. If it's Boston's probably got another project somewhere else, keep their one and employed, but out here. It's a great you know, analogy, it is. No, it's, you, it's you, a really good analogy. And that's the way tech is. It is. Right? Mm -hmm. This more than ever, a lot of construction. It's like the big dig on steroids. So, and But you to know. your point, it's construction that has to be minimally disruptive to the street level, if no, it can be. No one really yells, hey, stop digging up the street. No, they're like, oh, bummer, traffic. Oh, someone's got broken pipes, something's not working. I mean, they got to fix it. Right. This you, is what's going on. You've made this point many times. How do we deal with complexity in this industry? We layer on more complexity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we abstract and layer and put yeah. a little icing on it and call it math. <laughs> yeah. But when the plumbing stuff. breaks, <laughs> <laughs> you got to dig up the streets. And that's yeah. what's happening in all the enterprises well, right Well, I think that, that is bared out by everything we've been talking about, about how much is going to be on-prem and all of this. And there's still a ton of SQL Server out there and it's not going away, just like there's still mainframes that have to be hooked up because a lot of transactions are going through those mainframes now still, and that data needs to be in your Gen AI application because that data is super valuable. And how are you going to connect that all up? It's not all going to move to the cloud, it's all not going to move to one data warehouse. It's got to be yeah. you know, meshed together in some way, shape. And I think that's why, I think yesterday when you and Savannah were talking about the AI native startups coming in, I 100% agree that there's going to be things we won't even see yet. There's going to, but Airbnb was a weird startup selling cereal and then became the hottest thing in real estate. That kind of thing will happen. I and, wholeheartedly agree. And, and, with and, we're, and we're not even going to know where it came from. So, you know, it's curious to see how the plumbing all gets fixed, but, you know, watch one house, these companies, and again, Jerry Chen at Greylots Investing, uh, my friend Pete Sonsini just started a new fund. He was formerly NEA, he's the fund the board of Databricks. They all got a front row seat to the big players. The question is, Who's going to be taken down that territory? Where's the white space? These are the questions we're going to ask on theCUBE is what's the opportunity? Where's the innovation gaps? And you know, who's going to fill it? I don't buy that the startup's going to roll over everybody. I do think in AI, there are some barriers to entry issues around low end apps like RAG, for instance, and vector mm -hmm. in, in indexes. That's an easy replication, but I think some things you just cannot replicate and that's either workflows and or intellectual property like things. Yeah, I think you hit it uh, on the head yesterday afternoon uh, when we were wrapping up around what's going to become of, what features are going to go away. And I, I think we all agreed when we sat around the table and we saw Vector and we're like, yeah, Vector as it was originally seen as tagging and stuff like that, that, that should be a feature. That's a feature. It's not a company. And it's mm -hmm. not a company. And I think that's where you see graph and vector being put together yeah. and knowledge graphs and things coming together to actually build companies now more so than just individual features. And I, yeah, I think features, that's, projects, exactly. Yes, exactly. Well, that's, that's a great point. I'd love, love to take to the next level and get your thoughts what you guys think about this because Jensen Wong at GDC at NVIDIA called Gen AI a new category. So if features go away, or get consolidated into a platform, will there be new categories? So uh, were those features on the, on the survey categories or features? I mean, we used to call them categories, but now they become features if they become part of a platform. I mean, aren't they solutions? What, well, the question is, are I there? I thought they were workloads. I thought the question yeah. was somewhat, you know. Will there be a new category emerging in this data space? Question mark. Yeah. I, 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 think, to, well, I think there'd be a new category of, of, of applications that will emerge. So I think SaaS, mm -hmm. if, you, if you agree, that was a category of applications. Mm -hmm. I think you would agree with that. I think there's a new emerging category of intelligent applications, which is going to be more valuable than, than SaaS. I think the SaaS business model is at the- Sanjay the, Mohan the, the, yesterday said data agents are a, is a data product. So I, I just- Would you like, agree with that? Well, let me just finish, that's what I was saying. I think SaaS is at the, you know, the, the, the tail end of the S curve. Um, Data agents are agents are data, data, data products, product. not applications. I don't, I'm not sure they're either. I think agents can be <laughs> used to create data products. Um, and I think they interface with data products. And, and they, they tap into applications mm -hmm. um, to get data. But I'm not it's sure. A good, it's an open yeah. question. I'm I mean, not sure I, they're apps, you that's can, interesting. I don't think they're apps. I think, I think to Sun, uh, Sanjeev's point, it was, it's a data product because it delivers one, an agent is, as it is defined by certain people right now, is that, <laughs> you know, it's one task. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's go fetch X, or, and then this is go fetch Y, and this is go fetch, you know, A. And bring those together is yet another agent. Uh, so I, I think the way that data engineering and software engineering has happened, I think we're going to see a lot of that happen around AI, because AI, 
I don't think anybody's going to, in fact, I think Ali and it was that snowflake, and it's been everywhere. It's like the interface, and I know Ali said it, so the interface with AI is not going to be a prompt. I, I think that's going to go away, and we're going to be interfacing it with from voice, from natural language, from different ways of interfacing with it through other applications where we won't even know that it's happening. In the same way we don't dial up to the internet anymore. Co correct. Yeah. And I, yeah. I think to, it's something we were talking about when we were uh, visiting at CES just back yeah. in January, when we were talking about things like, hey, trip planning for going to watch the Patriots get their ass yeah. kicked in Germany. <laughs> that was like tons of fun to figure it out. But wouldn't it be great if I, if my AI agent understood my likes and mm -hmm. set of agents was able to go and create my trip to Germany to you know have more fun versus a three to nothing loss? I mean, again, when you start to look at that, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. great to great to savage. Have no, no matter what side, no matter on. yeah. So I mean, yeah. they were drinking a lot of beer in Germany. Yeah, yeah. It was that was that was <laughs> no the that, Patriots. I did I, I, I did go to a lot of breweries, so that was fun, and they could have told me to do that because it knows my habits and stuff like that. I think that's what you're going to see, and I think we had some great guests on yesterday. I think when we talked to uh, George and Gaurav, um, mm -hmm. Five Tran, and from Informatica you start to bring this stuff together and that metadata and the collection of metadata and how it's gonna get governed and those pipelines of all these data connectors coming together, that's where the promise of these data products really shines. And I think we're just at the beginning of it and I think there's so much complexity there that it, it fries everybody's minds that's not TransUnion and Walmart. I do think the conversation we had yesterday about what do we do today that goes away is an interesting one and I don't have all the answers, yeah. but you think about how we used to do directions. You, you talk, talk to my kids about, yeah, we used to actually, a map. yeah, we, we would take out an atlas and, or we would and call somebody that, and say, you know, give me the exact directions, you know, to get from whatever, Boston to New York. Or a triptych. You know, and then, yeah, a triptych. <laughs> And then when I get to your AAA. street, where do I, right? Yeah. And now it's just I drove up. a car that didn't have a mirror or a, a camera in the back. And I'm like, I had to like look behind me. I'm like, <laughs> like, God, like what? Man, I'm so used to the. I just got play. my first backup camera. I'm like, I'm like looking over my world. shoulder. I had a backup. I'm like, oh, that, I haven't has listened a in a while. So what behaviors change? What? Yeah. What? I used to remember phone numbers are much easier. Now I can't remember a phone number. Yeah, right. It's all my thing. No number way. one. Yeah. I mean, the agent. I asked Ollie the question because I asked him, "Where are we on the progress of agents?" And then he went in. He said basically nowhere is kind of what he said. Yeah. And then he gave us the example of it's a complex system. He was kind of going down the route of it's not the one thing like a chat bot. It's a complex system of things that are doing many things. Agreed. So like to your question about booking that flight and, and multiple databases or services across, car, rental, plane, that could be API based. That's multiple agents by today's construct. But agents need, uh, they need a unified. Trust. They need a unified metadata model. They need they mm -hmm. need a governance model. They need to know where they're going, it's, right? I mean, that's you fly a, and then yeah. have to rent a car. You gotta hit the website, different login, Cash. different thing, and then say something happens. Then you gotta call some chatbot. I mean, Expedia's got the worst chatbot I've ever seen. Sorry, Expedia, love you, but <laughs> the chatbot's weak. Yeah, I mean, it's like you can tell. I have a surgeon agent. Hi, and it's like it's clearly not a person. You know, so yeah. it's, like, it's like don't call it an agent. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm just thinking of a little logistical things I hope that go away. I mean, we all travel on the road for the Cube all the time. I don't want to do my expenses anymore. That stuff should file itself. I should not, it should know that I'm on the road, I'm on a gig, yeah, and boom. You're right, it's like the worst thing in and the world. And it can maybe prompt me with the three things that are like, was this your delinquents or was this for work? <laughs> and, you know, if I go shopping in Paris or something <laughs> or whatever to make sure I'm not charging the Cube for that, but. No, I, but these are the apps that are going to fill the white spaces. So I think Yeah, like this is the be, stuff that will just be so simple in the background that. No. And it's going to be the data that drives it. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be those types of applications that make the consumer mm -hmm. at the end, who all of these companies are serving, feel comfortable sharing that data with them because they're going to receive enough benefit that it's okay that they've shared that or taken that risk or they trust or they've built enough trust within that system that they're not going to lose that. I think it's really interesting. That'd be great. Cool. Well, guys, I don't know about y'all, but I am super pumped for day two. I cannot wait to continue learning from our guests. Thanks again for curating. Team, thank you all for doing such a great job. And uh, thank you in advance to our guests for being here. 
If you're watching this live broadcast and you're wondering, how could I be sitting right there or telling my beautiful story on the Cube stage at SuperCloud 8 in the future or at any of our fabulous events, or if you want something custom for you, know that you can reach out to any of us at any time and we would love to chat about telling your story. On that note, thank you so much for joining us here for day two of SuperCloud 7, getting you ready for the next gen data flat platform. Whew. Joined by Rob Strecce, John Furrier, and Dave Vellante. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.